Our first guest tonight is already criticizing the way in which the group is scheduling its public hearings. Here to talk about that as well as his concern over last week's train collapse in Lower Manhattan is Borough President Scott Stringer. Thank you for joining us. Nice to be here. So let's start off with the Charter Revision Commission. There's a hearing scheduled for next week, but as I understand, you're not happy with that hearing or the way in which they've kind of arranged the schedule so far for other hearings. This is so unfortunate. The mayor two years ago talked about having a Charter Revision Commission that would really take a holistic look at the basically the Constitution of New York City, how we can make government better, put everything on the table, talk about anything from term limits to the role of borough presidents, talk about different views of commissioners and things like that. And now we have a Charter Revision Commission which is not following what I think is the model the 1989 Charter Vision Commission, which Fritz, uh, Fritz Schwartz directed uh, under Mayor Koch, we're basically doing the Giuliani approach. We're taking a Charter Vision Commission, rushing to get proposals on the ballot for this year, when we really should be taking our foot off the accelerator and doing a top-to-bottom review of our government. So the fact that we're having a hearing on Tuesday, nobody knows about it. We're now at Good Friday, Sunday is Easter, last week Passover. There's been no public announcements, no press releases anyone can see. But there'll this be hearings is, throughout the summer. There, uh, there's this hearing on Tuesday and then other hearings that are going to be scheduled throughout the spring and summer. Isn't that enough time to review the, the Charter Revision Commission? First, first of all, when you look at the 1989 Charter Revision Commission, already there have been hearings throughout the city. At the end of that process, there were 692 witnesses over a very long period of time. Right now, you have a condensed charter vision process that is so, uh, with, with, a, with such a small window, there's not going to be the kind of discussion that we need to have. And when those charter revisions, those quick ones, are put forth, whether it was Giuliani in 1999 or Bloomberg's nonpartisan attempt in 2003, voters overwhelmingly reject the charter vision because they know there's something wrong here. I want to have a charter vision commission that really does engage the public. But having hearings with less than a week notice without any kind of publicity, who's going to come to these hearings? I think it's absolutely wrong that we're having a hearing, asking people to testify, and nobody in the city knows about it. Is it possible to split it up, have some of the initiatives addressed in 2010, others addressed in 2011? Why don't we just have a Charter Vision Commission, like we did in 1989, where we looked at all the issues, had a real discussion, Instead of simply throwing a couple on the ballot this year and then taking care of whatever political deal you had to deal with now and then deal with it, maybe you deal with it later, we need a real vision and a plan. Why would you put anything on the ballot in 2010 if you know you can't have a full discussion and vet these issues? I think it's very, very problematic. But don't you run the risk perhaps in 2011 of not much voter participation this year in 2010? We have statewide elections. Uh, um, for governor and other offices, there are likely to be more people going to the polls this year than there are next year. Well, that is the conventional wisdom. But research that my office has uh, uh, been conducting actually shows something that is, is quite surprising. There was, in charter visions in previous years, say 2002, when you had a gubernatorial race just like we do this year. And then in 2003, 2003 we had an off-year election. Would you be shocked if I told you that in 2003, more people voted for charter revision proposals in the off year than they did when you had a big uh, race for governor? Meaning, people who are going to vote for charter revision want to be engaged in the process. So the election year 2010 or 2011 isn't going to matter in terms of turnout. You're going to basically get the same people who voted in 20 this year for charter as you will next year based on our analysis, which we're going to talk about at the hearing on Tuesday. So that is just not true. What people will participate in is if they feel this is a real charter vision process. If this is simply to do term limits, to give a wink to law and order, or to do nonpartisan elections without looking at issues of governance, like some of my proposals, which is to create a commission on food and markets to deal with our food supply, break up the Department of Buildings so we can finally have an office of inspection so when we can deal with issues like crane collapses and public safety. That's when people are going to come out. That's when people are going to talk about charter vision and go to the polls. Right now what you have here is something that I think is very problematic and will fail because what they're trying to do is rush something that's just not right. And quickly, I mean, is another one of your concerns that one proposal could be to limit the power of your office and perhaps the public advocate's office? 
I am in favor of a full discussion of the borough president's office, public advocate's office, the role of the city council. I'd like to look at some mayoral agencies as well. But we're not going to get to do that if we don't have real public hearings. The one Tuesday night is going to be ridiculous. Nobody knows about it, so who's going to show up except people who are going to be told to be there. I want to have a real process. Matthew Goldstein is an excellent chair. The people on the Charter Vision Commission are some of the best and brightest people in our city. Let's put them to work and say, you know what? Let's do this over 18 months. Let's do what they did in 1989 and hold hearings around the city. Let's engage people. Let's do public service announcements. Let's go to all of our disadvantaged communities whose voices have always not been heard, where people don't have a seat at the table, and let, let's ask them what their government should look like. This is not the way to do it. And let me just remind you, the 1999, the 1999 Charter Vision Commission under Rudy Giuliani failed because they only wanted to go after Mark Green. In 2003, the Bloomberg Commission failed because it was about nonpartisan elections. The charter visions that, that passed muster are the ones that engage the voters, the public, and all of us in a real discussion. And I hope Matthew Goldstein and the commission will sort of do their own independent analysis and come to the conclusion that I'm putting forth is wait till 2011. Okay, let's talk for a second about St. Vincent's. Mount Sinai passed on a deal uh, with the hospital. Is bankruptcy now inevitable?